Hi guys, it's Louie here with Wood Unlimited and I've got a video for you today on laser marking metal objects with a laser marking spray. And the spray that I'm going to show you today is uh, the Ceramark. And what this is is um, metal laser marking spray. And what it'll do for you is, uh, you know, your standard CO2 laser or diode laser that you normally like a hobby laser or even like business uh, introductory laser is not going to engrave stainless steel. Uh, you need a fiber laser really if you're going to tackle something like that. So what you can do is you buy this marking spray and you're able to spray it onto uh, metal objects and when the laser hits it, it creates a permanent bond that marks uh, that marks the object. And today we're going to do a 32 ounce stainless bottle from JDS uh, as an example and it will form a bond that does not wash off. It is dishwasher safe. Uh, you could probably use enough abrasives to get it off if you want to scrub it, you know, like a Brillo pad or something, it'll come off, but just under normal use, normal wear and tear, it's not gonna take the spray off. So it is a permanent marking spray, uh, and it's it's uh, it's pretty effective. Now, a couple of things about this stuff is, this is a 12 ounce can, and I wanna say I paid somewhere in the ballpark of $100 for this can, I don't use it very much. Um, so the stuff can be pricey. Now, if you look at how many usage, usages, usages, yeah, you can get out of one can, uh, it's actually quite a bit. Um, uh, so if you look at your cost per unit, it's, it's probably extremely low. I haven't done the math, but I would imagine you can probably do 100, 200 uh, items out of this one can. They also sell it in a smaller can, so if you're just trying to get your feet wet with it, you probably have a 20 or $30 investment just to do some experimentation and get, um, you know, get going with the stuff. Um, but yeah, definitely it uh, comes in handy. Uh, so a couple other things that are kind of important. So this stuff is expensive, so you want to store it in the right storage temperatures, and all that is explained on the back. Uh, between 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So you, if you run a laser out in your garage or in a shop and it gets cold in the winter, you definitely don't want to be storing this stuff uh, out there because it can, um, I guess, it'll change states for you. Maybe it'll settle in the can and doesn't want to spray anymore. So store it at the right temperature, protect your investment. The other thing is when you get done, after you've sprayed the item, you actually have to take and turn the can upside down and spray it out until it goes clear. That way you don't have an actual marking spray that's uh, stopping up your nozzle. you just got the propellant that has come out and kind of flushed the lines. And then when you put it up for storage and you get it back out, now it's ready to go. So uh, that's one thing you need to make sure you do to uh, protect your investment there. But again, what we're going to do today is we're going to take this 32 ounce bottle. I've got a logo I've got to put on there for a customer. So uh, we'll, we'll get moving. A couple other things, again, this is a 32 ounce stainless bottle that I have purchased from uh, JDS. I have no affiliation with them, but they're a pretty good supplier, very consistent, fast shipping, all that kind of stuff. One other little thing that I do, and there may be a better method to do it, but before I take the lid off, I always put a piece of tape here just as a, um, as a guide. Uh, I put my engraving with uh, uh, the handle of the spout going that way, so I go ahead and center it on the bottle. That way when I get ready to put it on the laser, I've already got the center marked. Uh, just a little tip there, I use tape, uh, so that's one way to do it. Because once you, to explain better, once you get the lid off, you have no reference point of where, you know, where the orientation was for the lid. So a little tip there, throw a piece of tape on there, real easy, real cheap, real fast, easy to remove, you don't have to clean it. The other thing, um, did try, that was kind of cool idea, is use a dry erase marker. Just put a little mark on there with a dry erase marker. Then when you clean the cup up when you get done, uh, like you would anyway, you just wipe the dry erase off, you move on. But masking tape works as well, and uh, dry erase marker works well also. I'll share any other little tips that we run into uh, along the way. But let's, it, let's get going with uh, making the bottle. All right, so we have moved this party to the garage, and I've got the Ceramark spray here in hand. Uh, one very important thing is it says to shake it for two minutes before you get going. And what that's going to do is make sure that everything is um, spread out even, evenly and distributed evenly, and that way you don't get any kind of nozzle clogs or some thick particles or something coming up through it. So I'm going to spend my next two minutes shaking this can, and I'll be right back with you. All right, so my arm's tired from two minutes of shaking, uh, but I'm back with you. Uh, like I mentioned, I was going to share some hacks along the way, so I'm going to show you a little mini hack I've got on my Omtac laser. I don't have the auto focus bed, uh, and I also don't have a manual. Excuse me, I don't have an automatic Z up and down as manual. So what I actually do is I take the knob off, and I put my DeWalt 20-volt drill on there. This is how I let the bed up and down. So don't make fun of my honeycomb bed. It needs to be clean pretty bad but look so like that easy peasy 
Now what that does for you, it just saves you a ton of time because if you wind that bed up and down by hand, your wrist is gonna be sore, you're gonna have a carpal tunnel, you're gonna be in the hospital, all those things. And it'll be two days later before the bed goes up and down. So a little mini hack there with the DeWalt drill. All right, I'm gonna get the uh, rotary set up and I'll be right back with you. All right, I got the rotary in place. I run a Pyburn rotary. Uh, it's the Pyburn 3.0, I think it is. I am very fond of it. And I actually, um, kind of funny, I've got one here that I did not like. I'm not affiliated with Pyburn, but it's a good product. But I tried and it just did not work out. And it is gonna now be its forever home. But um, Pyburn is great, works really good. The hold down clamp, the rubber bands, uh, it's just well designed, I think and uh, I enjoy using it. So I'm gonna show you uh, how I put the bottle on and another little mini hack that, I, that I've got. All right, so if anybody has any experience engraving water bottles or uh, the JDS water bottles, especially I know, um, it is tough to get that thing on the rotary because where the, the top thread's on, the diameter of the bottle uh, is not nearly as large as it is, as it is in the rest of the place. And, the threads of the bottle at the top are what really need to be resting on the rubber bands of the pie burn or of the rotary that you're using, or at least the pie burn in this case. So what I've actually done is I've taken and 3D printed a, um, a circular ring, and then I'll, I'll give you a little illustration of what it's like with and without the ring. All right, so here is without the ring on there, and you can kind of see how it doesn't really go evenly. The threads are, are resting right there on the rubber bands. So it's really hard to keep um, any kind of stability when you're uh, trying to use a rotary. So that's without the ring. And then here's a look with the ring. You can see everything's a lot more even. So this ring here is the same diameter as the actual bottle itself, uh, which makes things easier. It's a lot more level. The other thing is that this ring is not solid hard plastic. It's actually rubbery. It's made out of TPU. That's what it's 3D printed out, which is just like a rubber filament, which when that rubber filament sits on top of these bands, you get a really good grip. So a lot better than the threads and actually a lot better than if you were to 3D print this in something like a PLA or uh, uh, I don't know, it's PETG, PETG, whatever I call it. But um, it works really good. It grips up well. And then I'll just jog the machine for you. You can kind of see, and it's, I've got the ring on there straight. It's actually really smooth and it uh it stops and avoid helps you avoid a lot of problems but the rings work really really well um and i do actually i sell those um it was in my etsy shop so i sell them for the 32 ounce or for the 40 ounce uh polar camels i haven't done anything for the yetis but i know that uh the yetis need an exam uh, an adapter as well but i just don't do many yetis so i haven't messed with it all right so moving on so I've already done it, but uh, these bottles need to be washed before you apply the Ceramark. So I actually took and uh, cleaned, I used some LA Awesome, which uh, works really well. Scrubbed it, washed it, rinsed it, dried it, all that. And that's just to make sure you don't have any kind of oil or dirt that you're gonna spray the Ceramark on um, because then it's, it's not gonna work as effectively. So I've shaken this for two minutes. I probably need to shake it a little bit more because I've been videoing and filming. And um, what you're supposed to do is put just a very light uh, spray coat of this stuff onto the bottle. If you go too thick, your laser is not going to penetrate. If you're thick in spots and thin in spots, you're not going to get the same penetration and the same bond all the way throughout from one part of the engraving to the other. So what you want to do is hold the can. I think it's uh, 8 to 12 inches away uh, and then make sure you spray the, spray the nozzle down fully and just keep a you know a steady hand and keep moving in. Uh, you should be fine, but you just really just need a thin coat. That's all you need. All right, and I cannot walk and chew gum at the same time, but we're gonna see if I can film and spray at the same time. We may be doing a re, uh, retake here, let's see. All right, so what I tried to do is just get a thin, even coat on the areas that are gonna to need to be engraved. I may have gone just a little bit thick, but we will find out. So that spray just, uh, that's simple to do, so I'm gonna just give it a couple of minutes and let it dry now. All right, so we got the tumbler on here and when I say tumbler bottle, I definitely have got a thick spot there. You can see the run, but we are gonna give it a shot anyway and we're gonna see what happens. If nothing else, we maybe we'll get some educational value out of it. All right, here goes nothing.
All right, so we've got the tumbler right here, hot off of the press, or water bottle hot off the press, and got a little thick spot there. Kind of anxious to see how that's going to turn out. We'll take this inside, get it washed up, and see what we got. All right, so I'm back with you. We have got this bottle all washed up, and it looks like the logo actually came out uh, pretty good. If you look, even that small text where it says vintage in family, all those details came out pretty good. The 2019. All that turned out pretty well. Uh, so overall, pretty happy with this. Got to make a black one uh, to go along with it to match. That's going to be a powder coated one. But yeah, so that is uh, how it works. This is the finished product. You can actually, you can feel the texture to it. But um, I just wash it up with warm water. And, you know, it's, it's raised a little bit. And again, this is not something that's going to wash off. It is dishwasher safe. Um, you... You know, it'll take a little bit of a beating, a little bit of abrasion. Obviously, if you took sandpaper or billow pad or something like that to it, you could wear it down and wear it off. But it's it's a pretty permanent um, bond that it's got uh, to the to the bottle. So, anyway, very interesting stuff. Check it out. I'm not affiliated with any of these people, but uh, Sarah Mark, um, I think I got this off of Amazon. I'll drop a link down in the bottom. Also, I'll drop a link to the uh, tumbler rings that I actually sell uh, right here in my Etsy shop. Uh, along with uh, digital files if you want to check me out on Etsy it is um, Wood Unlimited shop is the name of my store there and then I also have uh, woodunlimited.org uh, which is my website uh, where I actually sell finished items but I also sell some digital files there stickers and uh, a few 3d printed items and some other things like that uh, as well and then you can follow me on Facebook it's Wood Unlimited Designs uh, is my page I'll drop a link to that as well got an instagram i'll drop all my social down in the bottom but if this uh, video helped you out brought you any kind of value if you would hit that like button hit that subscribe button that helps me out a ton and if you got any questions comments or anything like that or if you want to see any kind of different video content in the future uh, feel free to uh, drop that in the in the links below that is coco that is my pet uh, monkey he's a red-handed tamarin he is uh, chirping and going to town over there i'll share him in a future video but um, Coco, Coco boy, it's a good boy. Anyway, I will show you guys him uh, later. But anyway, again, Sarah Mark, I'll drop a link in the in the uh, comments below. And again, if you like and subscribe, that helps me out a very very great deal. So thank you for watching.